What's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you five tiny fixer upper properties in Washington, DC. And these range from single family houses to row houses. I put a condo in there as well. And these are all small properties. They're the size of most people's living rooms and they all need work some more than others, which we'll see in a second here. So you're definitely going to want to watch all the way to the end of this video to see all the tiny fixer uppers in Washington, DC. And that being said, let's jump into the video okay so here is property number one 836 new hampshire avenue let's just take a quick look at it uh so there's the exterior and we'll, we'll go more into the pictures in a second here but this one sold for 685 uh very recently and it's only 650 square feet above ground so first let me just show you where this is in washington dc so this is in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in the city so that's why it's selling for 685. you can see downtown dc we're in foggy bottom this is where the property was west end georgetown calorama you know these are some of the priciest neighborhoods in the city so it makes sense now let's take a look at some of the photos this was a two bedroom one bath house um, you can see from the exterior you know it needs central ac but it looks pretty nice i mean and you know, it's, I've seen much worse fixer uppers than this. And you got the nice little patio out here. So it's also cool because it's kind of like a duplex setup. So there's no one on, on your one side, uh, which is good if you're doing renovations and good when you're living in the city, you don't want to hear other people like stomping around and whatnot. So here's the living room. And as you can see, the, the hardwood floors look fine. The walls look fine. Maybe you could modernize the lighting, maybe do some recessed lights or get a new light fixture, but pretty minor stuff so far and you here's another view of it you can see you know probably needs a new door central ac recessed lights would probably help and here's the kitchen so the kitchen looks perfectly livable perfectly usable this my guess was this was probably a rental uh there's a college gw right next door so it was potentially a college rental but you know it's in perfectly livable condition um you know if you were going to renovate it you would just completely gut the kitchen and it wouldn't cost too much because the kitchen's obviously not very big and then you have the uh, door going out to the backyard there. So this would be the first bedroom. Um, as you can see, you know, the floors are in good condition. Everything seems to be in pretty good average condition. Here's another photo. And here's the second bedroom. And this one actually looks like it'd be really small. So bedroom two, larger than the photo, which means is, you know, people realize how, how small it is. And yeah, it looks like if you open this door, it might come all the way out to the window. But again, you're in an urban city area, a dense area, so you don't need a ton of space. This would be a perfect office or even a, a you know, a second bedroom for, you know, college kid or, you know, somebody that just wants to live in the city. You know, you're paying for location. You're not paying for space here. Here's the bathroom. So obviously, you know, it's livable, but could use some work. Uh, nothing wrong with that. And again, because it's a small house, this bathroom would not cost too much to renovate. I'd probably estimate somewhere in the ballpark of like ten to twenty five thousand dollars, depending on how you know how much you want to spend now the basement is the one interesting part about this because if you were able to do like an egress window here you can see there's a window cutout or an egress window there by you know moving the laundry around and then creating like an airbnb suite or some type of rental suite or adding a third bedroom that could add a ton of value a lot of people in dc they dig out the um the basement floor you know like a foot or two feet to get to that seven foot height so if you're able to do that uh you could add you know hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars of value just just doing that here we have the backyard and you can see they have the separate entrance which is good for rentals um, and then they just have this weird platform here so you, you could make this backyard you could design it a little bit better maybe do some type of deck or something nicer than than just like wooden beams across your grass or whatever you have down there you could maybe you could even do a parking spot back here i'm not sure if if it would fit but parking obviously is so valuable in this neighborhood and you know a lot of people don't even have cars but if you do have a parking spot you could rent it out for a pretty good amount uh, or you could just use it for yourself obviously so let's check out the next property all right so here's the second property and this is this one is actually my favorite just because of the the front picture i love this there's two massive houses and then you have this tiny little <laughs> cottage looking house right here however what's really good about this one is that it sold for 370 so a single family house for 370 in dc you know it's only two bedrooms one bath but it seems like there's some good value there especially because the neighbors i don't know if these were investors that that did those properties or maybe somebody else but it seems like a good deal let me show you where it is real quick so this property is near the maryland border that's the border of maryland mount rainier really nice area so the last property we looked at was down here in Foggy Bottom. This one is 
more close to like Brookland, Woodridge, which is a more suburban residential area, but still a lot going on. And the property values there are going up, trending upwards. So if you're looking for a little bit more space, this could be a pretty good area. Now this one was 692 square feet and it was about half of the price per square foot of the last one. So let's take a look at some photos and you can tell someone probably just did these photos in their spare time. They did not put a lot of effort into selling this property or marketing it correctly. You can see like the blurry iPhone photos here. And you know, just not great photos, but you can see the house, I mean, looks like it's in really livable condition. You know, you get rid of the clutter, probably do some renovations, probably do a new deck. Actually, really what you would do to maximize the value here is you would talk to your neighbors and you would see which contractor they got and how much it cost them. And if it was an investor, then you would just have to get some bids. Uh, but this is probably what I would do. I'd probably purchase this property and then eventually expand. Or you could just hold on to it, not really put any money into it. Just keep it as like a livable rental and then wait for property values to go up and then eventually just sell it to a builder or developer without doing any work. So two options there. All right, let's check out the third property. So this property is almost like comically small, at least based on the photos. And again, you know, if you have a small house, get professional photography because professional photographers can make your house look massive. But as you can see here, this house almost looks like it's just like a garage. It doesn't even look like a real house. And I think this was actually just an extension. That's not the full scope of the property. Um, probably a kitchen or bathroom over here. But it, yeah, it's hard to even get an idea of like how, is that like a window? Does that just, is that the entire house right there? You can see it's semi-detached to another property. And this one is 670 square feet. So about the same size as the last property. And as far as the location, let me just pull that up for you. So this is actually another really good location. Petworth is a very popular neighborhood. There's properties that are renovated that sell for seven, eight, nine hundred, a million dollars. This one, to maximize the value, um, you're going to have to build up. You're going to have to do a second or probably even a third level and really get this property looking more like a traditional house. Right now, it's kind of like a studio apartment. It's really cool, actually. I would you know, probably love to renovate this property. But if you want to see the maximum value, you might even have to just knock it down and just build like another row house. Um, so you'd have to talk with a contractor about that. So let me know what you think of the houses so far. Drop me a comment below which one is your favorite so far. And let's check out the next property. Okay, so 4215 Mead Street Northeast. I kind of like the looks of this one so far. It has good curb appeal. Looks like it has a yard. And this one is the only property we're looking at today that has three bedrooms. So three bedrooms, one bath. Which in terms of resale value, you're going to have a lot more buyers at three bedrooms than, than two bedrooms. And look at the price here. So to purchase any property in DC, a single family house under 200,000 is, is basically unheard of. So I think these people got a pretty good deal. Let me show you where it is. The location is not as ideal in terms of amenities. So you're east of the river here and east of the river. Traditionally, the properties have uh, been selling for less. However, they've been trending upwards, uh, as has most of DC. Uh, but over here is more of where the restaurants and downtown and the stadiums actually you have the Nats Park over in this area. Um, but this is, you know, still a really great residential type of area. And you have the metro right there. You have two metro stations, which also helps for resale value, you know, livability, you know, public transportation is always great. So let's take a look at some of the photos here. So this might have been a foreclosure. You see these notices on the door or with vacant properties in DC, they always post notices on the windows and doors. Looks like the siding's not bad. Get paint up here. I actually like this yard. It's fenced in. You could you could make it look nicer. You can get rid of this tree and just make the grass a lot nicer. But it's a, it's a pretty good sized yard. Here's the back of the house and the roof doesn't look like it's terrible, but it doesn't look like it's great either. You'd probably eventually want to get that replaced. Here's just another look at it. I may, maybe I kind of like that tree. You know, you don't want the branches falling on the roof and everything, but so here's the living room and with a small house like this, you're going to probably have to do these windy staircases, which are, you know, save space. And it's kind of adds like a modern touch to it. And it looks like you can just like walk around and kind of look down on the living room, which is kind of cool. So this one looks like it probably needs a, you know, you need new floor. You probably need to gut renovate this property. I'm not even sure what this is. Maybe that's pantry or you got the wood paneling here. Nice photo of 
messed up drywall. And that, I guess that's a bedroom. And they just left the window open because, hey, if you're selling a house for 200K, who needs your windows uh, close? So the bathroom, yeah. So this would be, this looks like it would be a gut renovation. And it looks like you have at least one bedroom up here. I kind of like this walkway where you're, you know, looking, you get the bird's eye view of the house. And you see there's water damage. So you probably would need to renovate the, the roof. And what's interesting about this property, you have the basement. So again, we'd have to see how tall the ceilings are. But if you can get a seven foot high basement, do an egress window, maybe put an extra bathroom down there, that could be a really valuable um, addition to your property. You could potentially rent it out as a Airbnb suite, or when you go to resell it, you could add a fourth bedroom and a second full bathroom, which a lot more buyers are looking for that. And I can't tell if that's like water or if that's just dirt. So let me know what you think. If you think that's water, <laughs> let me know. But as you can see here, there's, there's obvious some type of water damage, which in DC is not uncommon in some of these basements. So what I would do is I would try to make it seven foot high ceiling and then I'd put a waterproofing system around the foundation of the property. So you're, you're gonna do a gut renovation with this one. This one needs a ton of work, but it's also only 200K. So if you put 100,000 into it, you know, you're still only into it for 300K, which I know these properties around here sell for a lot more than that uh, detached, you know, as far as detached houses go. So a lot of value with this one. Now let's check out the next property. So this one is a condo and it's only 326 square feet. It's a studio condo. And this is in one of the best neighborhoods in terms of like nightlife, restaurants. You're over by U Street, um, Adams Morgan. Calorama. This is actually where Jeff Bezos uh, purchased a property recently. But this is more if you want to be in the action um, of DC, if you want to really live that uh, DC lifestyle, uh, this one could be for you. And this one also actually comes with parking. So if you look at the exterior, I mean, if they were to make this entire building condos, which maybe they did at 326 square feet, they could probably do like 10 condos uh, based on just the square footage. So it has a really nice exterior. You got some outdoor space. Maybe you could put a little TV or something. So here's the interior. You know, obviously it needs to do paint. The floors, I can't tell if this is like cement, but you'd probably do some type of tile, uh, some type of like modern gray tile, recessed lights. Here's a view of the kitchen. You got the tiniest little stove I've ever seen. You'd probably just renovate that, do a brand new kitchen, new floors, recessed lights, paint. Uh, laundry looks like it's been updated. So they actually updated the bathroom. I mean, at least the shower. Um, I probably wouldn't paint this like turquoise blue. And you could do an, uh, this is probably the cheapest vanity and, and mirror you could get. So you could still upgrade this bathroom a little bit more, even though they've you know spent some money on it. So you do the new floors, like I mentioned. You know, this would be a very simple, you could renovate this property in like a week. You know, so long as you had the right cabinets and everything. Uh, but, you know, pretty cool property. And then this one, you know, obviously you're purchasing it for a location. You can almost have two houses. You could buy this one and then you could buy a house out in the suburbs. So this could be like the weekend crash place. And as you can see here, I guess this is probably like a shared deck with the building. I'm not quite sure. But you have parking. So what's valuable about this one is you could rent out the parking spot. You'd have to check with the condo docs because some condos have different restrictions. But the condo fees are only 202 per month. And I know this parking spot, you could rent it out for at least $200 per month. So that could just pay for your condo fee right there. Maybe even more than that. So those are five properties. And I actually threw in one more bonus property, which is kind of interesting here. So check out this one. 467 square feet. And it's just it's actually just a garage. So it's a garage space for $50,000 that recently sold. So if you want a parking spot in DC, you're gonna have to pay at least 50K. And this is actually in the suburbs. This is actually much further away from downtown. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised it went for that much. Um, I mean, you can get properties closer. So downtown would be, you know, over here. You can sell parking spots for like 75, even 100K uh, for the right spot in downtown. So thanks for watching this video and let me know what you think of the properties. Let me know which property was your favorite. And if you have any questions, drop them below and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.